is available, and he brings his 10.7 rebound average from this season. So the Silva will be coming off the bench for Hawaii. He's in the dark uniforms, and Santa Barbara, who is in the white uniforms, UCSB, 23 and 7 overall, 14 and 5 in conference play. Corey, you and I talked to both of these coaches yesterday, and we asked the same question. We asked Coach Pasternak for UCSB as you see his starting lineup there. Hey, Coach, you won 23 games this year. Are you scratching your head that you're only in a tie for first place in this conference? Just shows you the depth that the Big West Conference has as Andre Kelly, the little turnaround there for UCSB. Andre Kelly taking his time in the block with the one-on-one. -on -one. Nice little baby hook. Jovan McClanahan, Noel Coleman in the backcourt. And more sex. You see there the freshman from Senegal getting the start instead of Bernardo De Silva again who had missed those last two games with injury. So De Silva coming off the bench and more set, who in his last two games is averaging 14 points, 13 rebounds. He gets the starting nod for a third straight game. Good inbound pass underneath and a finish for Noel Coleman, the junior from Belgium. Little defensive breakdown. Everybody worried about the shooter coming off and they forget to pick up the roll man. Both Noel Coleman and A.J. Mitchell from Belgium. They're a couple years apart, didn't really grow up playing much together, but some Belgium flavor in our game here today is a foul on the floor. There's Joe Pasternak in his sixth season. He was the 2021 Big West Coach of the Year. He's got 20 or more wins in five of six seasons for UCSB. A 23-win season this year. He's looking for a share of the conference title at the very least. As I mentioned, UC Irvine is tied with Santa Barbara atop the league standings. Irvine is in action at home right now against Cal State Bakersfield. As another feed inside, back-to-back -back buckets for Andre Kelly. And Corey, if both UCSB and Irvine win tonight, they would be co-regular season champs. And I don't think anybody likes those type of situations. You want to be an outright champ. It's like kissing your sister. When you've competed this long all season, you don't want to share with anybody. Offensive rebound for Kamaka Pepe. There is a pathway for Hawaii to share the conference title if they were to win tonight and Irvine was to lose. Another offensive rebound. Three-point attempt not there. And finally, Andre Kelly brings it around for the Gauchos. Quickly the other way, A.J. Mitchell just too strong, had the double team collapsing on him, and now Hawaii gets out to run. Here's Jovan McClanahan in the corner to Coleman off the mark. A loose ball tracked down by Mitchell, now he wants to press. Up ahead, nice reverse layup underneath for Calvin Wishart, the redshirt senior, senior from Delano, Minnesota. You know, most teams run off of a turnover, so both of these teams will run off a missed shot. They don't hesitate to push the ball up the floor and get the quickest shot and the best shot. Lob inside the more set. Good defensive job by Andre Kelly, who came over from Cal as a grad transfer this year and has been a steadying force in the front court for UCSB. There's Josh Pierre Louis missing the finger roll. Kelly the offensive rebound. Here, Louis, last two games, averaging 15, 5, and 4. It's been all Kelly so far for the Gauchos, and it continues that way. Six points to start the game for Andre Kelly. Yeah, and I was just going to say, it looks like it might be a big night for Andre Kelly. He's got a lot of confidence going up against Morsec. He's bigger, he's stronger, with more experience, looking to take it right to the freshman. Maybe we will see Bernardo da Silva coming off the bench quicker than Iran Gannat wanted because so far Andre Kelly having his way with more set. And Kelly pulls down another rebound. He's got six points, four boards in the opening three and a half minutes. Here's Miles Norris, two giant steps into the lane. He is a big, long man, six foot ten senior from San Diego. A 10 2 run for UCSB and a timeout on the floor. Right now, the Gauchos making the stretch, and they're able to continue to have that offensive output.
20. Josh Pierre-Louis, 17. You go down the list, Calvin Wishart, who's been kind of a bench role player for them this season, had 10 points. And we'll see if that can continue. So far, it's been the Andre Kelly show. Six points, a perfect three of three from the floor. While Hawaii made their first bucket of the game, has missed their last six field goals. Maka Hepa, the senior from Alaska. Good defense so far by UC Santa Barbara. Coleman angling his way in, nowhere to go. Three on the shot clock. That's an off-balance shot as Jovan McClanahan got a late whistle to help out, and he'll go to the line. Laron Ganat, his eighth season with Hawaii. Second 20-win campaign for him in his eight years. He was the 2016 Big West Coach of the Year. That was the other season that they had 20 or more wins when they went to the NCAA tournament and knocked off Cal, the number four seed. And they're looking to play spoiler here tonight. And again, Corey, Hawaii, they're not out of this. If they win tonight against UC Santa Barbara and Bakersfield upsets Irvine, then all of a sudden, Hawaii, UCSB, Riverside, and Irvine all could sh potentially share the conference title. Well, then it's pretty clear we're just going to have to settle this next week in Henderson, Nevada, <laughs> in the conference tournament. That's just way too much to worry about. Now, we'll go down to winning percentage is the first tiebreaker, and then there's some other tiebreakers for conference tournament seeding. As Miles Norris missed that one. There are no buys in the Big West Conference Tournament, so even if you win the regular season, you still have to play in the first round, and this has been a fantastic top-to-bottom league this year with a ton of upsets. As an offensive foul is called on Hawaii. Well, Coleman called for the push off. Excuse me, that's on McClanahan. Right here, McClanahan, one of the best handles in the league. Can't get any separation, and that off arm is going to get you every time right in front of the officials. Easy call to make. And he's one of those guys that has that pull up jumper, so he doesn't really need to do stuff like that. Josh Pierre Louis took the charge. Errant pass will send it right back to Hawaii. A turnover on the Gauchos. Joe Pasternak not pleased with that. He was the former head coach at University of New Orleans, was an associate head coach at your stomping grounds, Arizona, under Sean Miller. Got his start in coaching under Ben Braun, our ESPN colleague at Cal. Nice inbound pass, both of Hawaii's points, uh, excuse me, two of their field goals, I should say, have come off of inbounds plays. And you know, Coach Joe Passion is not going to be happy about that. The same inbounds play twice worked out well for the Rainbow Warriors. Norris a straightaway three. A 40% three-point shooter on the year. Didn't look good on that one. Nice take inside by Samuta Avea. That push off of his line. Hawaii still struggling to shoot the basketball. Two of nine from the floor. Here's Cole Anderson for three. Eric, we talked about the quick shot for the Gauchos. You see it right there off the miss. They're not afraid to push the ball down the floor and take the quickest shot they can find. Anderson coming off a 15-point performance against UC Davis. Makes it a 13-6 game in favor of the Gauchos. And a hand check foul up top on Hawaii. Anderson, the sophomore from Fresno. Sister Megan actually plays for the UC Santa Barbara women's basketball team. Foul on Anderson, his first. Holman looking to get something going here for the Rainbow Warriors. Avea, the senior from Oahu. Good defense underneath by A.J. Mitchell to keep him in front. Now Tepa with two to shoot off the back of the iron. Right now, Hawaii's offense not looking as smooth as it normally does. They love to get you rotating and shoot open shots. That's a good-looking shot. 
Another triple for UCSB this time off the hands of Miles Norris. And he's such a tough person to guard because he can do the pick and the pop as you saw right there. Don't be fooled by his size. He is a great shooter. And Norris, I know he wants to play better because in the first matchup between these two teams, he had just four points in 36 minutes. And I'm sure looking to bounce back on his senior night here for the Gauchos. All UCSB so far. Here's Coleman. Nice free throw line jumper for the junior. And that's his game. The stop and pop. It's a good three-point shooter. Can also drive, but he really loves that penetration pull-up. UCSB offense this year. 49% field goal shooting team. That's good for eighth in college basketball. And averaging just under 12 turnovers a game. So they're smart, they're experienced, and they make passes like that as Andre Kelly now has eight points here in the first half. Boy, he's having a feast right now. All he's doing is staying big in the lane, and the guards are finding him. High percentage shots for the big fella. Off inside. That's a tough shot underneath. And that is Bernardo da Silva, a welcome sight for Hawaii fans. He's missed the last two games. It was a game time decision here in this one. Gets his first bucket. And he's out there primarily to try to slow down Kelly, who's off to a hot start. I think they may have went to him a little earlier than they wanted to. And we saw what Kelly was doing to the freshman Moore sec underneath. And so Aron Gannat pulls him and sends in Bernardo De Silva for his team. Hawaii still trailing by eight. Would be a 14 seed. Plenty of guys you could consider for Big West Conference Player of the Year. We've got one playing here tonight in A.J. Mitchell, but Elijah Pepper for UC Davis has been spectacular as well. 22 points per game. Leads the Big West and is fifth in Division One. You know, both of those players have great numbers right there, but they've got different roles on their team. So when you see 22 points a game versus almost 16 for Mitchell, you know, Mitchell's role is different. Mitchell's throwing out all those assists, and he's shooting a great percentage from the floor. Well, Corey, Mitchell doesn't have a bucket in tonight's game. He's already got five assists. That's ties his season average. And that's what will make the buckets come, the ability to move the ball and then eventually look for your shot. Calvin Wisher. It's another three-pointer for UCSB there. Three for four from behind the arc. Largest lead of the game for them until Noel Coleman knocks down a three in his response. He was a second-teamer in the conference last year for Hawaii. Yeah, and Coleman's got really got to get going. He's an explosive player. They can really use some of those baskets from him. A guy that can get in the lane and create for others. For Anderson, one of the three players for UCSB, who's knocked down a three so far. Six on the shot clock. Wishart, a long two, and he's all of a sudden starting to heat up. Calvin Wishart, who came over from Georgia Southern, has been with UCSB a couple of years, gives the Gauchos a 10-point lead once again. E, that's when you know it's going to be a long night. When you play great defense and they still score in the final seconds, Boy, that really takes the wind out of your sails. Good pass, but unfortunately, Dion Riley lost it off of his fingertips and out of bounds for a turnover. Santa Barbara, 10 of 15 from the floor to start things off in this game. Nothing, I'm sure, would make Coach Pasternak happier, Corey, than putting this game away early and then starting to watch the UC Irvine Cal State Bakersfield score. Well, you know, you talk about 10 to 15 from the floor as they miss a shot right there. You've also got to take a look at nine assists. Guys are passing the ball, a lot of wide open looks, and there's a big transition bucket for Hawaii. That's what they like to do get down the court, toe the line, and find the shooters. That's Justice Jackson, the sophomore. A career high a couple games ago against Bakersfield with 16. He averages just three points per game, and he knocked down the triple there to pull Hawaii within seventh. There's A.J. Mitchell still scoreless, but does have those five assists. Nice take inside for Matija Belic, the freshman from Serbia. A 
fast pace to this game so far, Corey. Everybody's got fresh legs, and you see right there the elevation, the extension, and the knockdown. We talked about Coleman just a few moments ago, and there he is again. And despite all the big plays from the Gauchos early, it's a two-possession game. Great hands on the lob. A.J. Mitchell midair getting his first bucket. Good vision, but for Hawaii, you cannot allow that. You got to have more pressure on the ball. You can't let a guy cut to the rim and have that kind of vision. Noah Coleman has eight of the last 13 points for Hawaii. Let's we'll see what they do here on this possession. It's an offensive foul. All of against Beyond Riley. Right here, a little bit of a defensive breakdown. You got to help your teammate on the lob, and there's got to be more ball pressure. Great execution by the Gauchos, but the Warriors know they have to do a little bit better than that on defense. Good conversion. A.J. Mitchell finally on the receiving end of an assist. I'm sure that feels good for him. Hey, that's why you give it out. <laughs> you give it out so you get it back. 27-19 lead for UCSB. They're three for four from behind the arc and a 10-point paint point advantage. Go inside again. Norris keeps it alive. Athletic play by Miles Norris. Ten on the shot clock. And an offensive rebound by Norris. Way to go, big fella. Norris now with seven. Leonardo De Silva inside, backing down Andre Kelly. And Kelly able to stay in front. A tough shot for the junior from Hawaii. Big possession right here for Hawaii. They really need to stop. They're down 10. They don't want it to get out of hand. And it's looking like that's what's going on. Calvin Wisher, 10 points on four of five shooting. UCSB four of five as a team from three. Crossover by McClanahan. He's been quiet so far. Comes up short. Got his own rebound. Inside Samuta Ofea. Gets a friendly roll there. Samuta Ofea was a high school signee. I can't even talk, Corey, because every time I say something, Calvin Wisher hits another three-pointer for UC Santa Barbara. They're up by 14. And right now, Hawaii needs to bring more energy defensively. Too many open shots for the Gauchos on their home floor, and they are drilling everything right now. They've got to match their intensity. There you see the defensive effort by the Gauchos denying the post. Fourteen-point lead with six and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Donation goes to Cancer Research. Six minutes, 35 seconds to go here in the first half of the Thunderdome in Santa Barbara, California. Eric Rothman, Corey Williams with you, and UCSB came to play a chance to take home a conference title with a win here tonight. 14-point advantage so far. That's a turnover as Jovan McClanahan lost the handle. And that's something you won't see a lot of. He's so good in those ball screen situations. But right there, took his hand off the ball, took his eyes off the ball for a second and lost it out of bounds. And now it's back on defense for the Rainbow Warriors. Both of these teams take care of the ball, both averaging about 12 turnovers a game. Wisher with the hot hand comes up short. Miles Norris, another offensive rebound for him. Let's see what A.J. Mitchell can do. Finds Wisher in the corner. Eight to shoot. A drop pass deflected and a turnover on the Gauchos. Corner off the mark. Evans Caputo into the game for Santa Barbara for the first time. 
Mentioned that with Kote Kitong and Ajari Sani out due to injury, that guys like Caputo have gotten increased minutes here over the past few games. Amaka Hepa, good head fake, mid-range jumper, rattles in. And he's always a threat to knock down the three, but right there, good solid move. Getting to the mid-range, also a player that can post up. Spent three years at Texas, second year of Hawaii. He started every single game that he has played for the Rainbow Warriors. That's the Gauchos lead down to 12, under five minutes to play here in the opening half. With your shirt. Looking for some help, instead stays on the pivot foot. And Calvin Wisher has 15 first half points. He, he's in the zone right now. It got started early when you knocked down a couple of threes, but right now he's just out there playing horse. Fadeaways, pull ups, wide open threes. They've really got to get into him and try to slow him down. He's a tie for Wisher to 16. He's already one away from that, just under four and a half minutes to go in the first half. It's McClanahan. Not there in Hawaii, just 8 of 20 from the floor to start the game. Mitchell with a ton of patience goes up against McClanahan and draws the foul. Four minutes even to go here in the first half. Everything going the Gaucho's way. They're shooting 68% from the three. Rothman, Corey Williams here with you in the final regular season game for the Big West Conference tonight. Santa Barbara tied with UC Irvine. The number one spot in the Big West Conference standings. UCSB win here against Hawaii would guarantee at least a share of the regular season title for Joe Pasternak and the Gauchos. Last check, UC Irvine was up double digits at home against Cal State Bakersfield. We'll keep an eye on that game as well. So far, the offense for Hawaii, Corey, has not been able to keep up with the hot shooting of UCSB. No, and they've got to pick it up on the defensive end. Hawaii is a team that can score in bunches, but they have not used the ball screen. They haven't found each other. Not a lot of assists going on for them in this first half. His second foul. Pasternak in his sixth season. 23 and 7 overall for the Gauchos this year. And now a foul going the other way. It's against Bernardo da Silva for Hawaii. You know, Corey, I was talking to former Cal head coach Ben Braun, who hired Joe Pasternak. And he was telling me that Joe just kept calling and calling and calling, asking for a job, asking for a job. And finally, Ben said, listen, Joe, I'll hire you as long as you promise never to call me again. And that's how Joe's <laughs> career got started. That's a great story, and it really is easy to understand when you look at the way he coaches and the intensity he brings to the table for his players that never say die mentality. And they've been in some tight games this year and have willed themselves to some wins, and I know he's been a huge part of that. He's had to make some adjustments on the fly with those injuries. I mentioned the coach Kitong and Ajari Sani both out. And that one for Samuta Avea comes up short. Gauchos do think that Sani might be available in the conference tournament, but we shall see. Good move for A.J. Mitchell as he's put on the brakes and hit the mid-range jumper. Boy, he, his future is just so bright as a player. There's really not much he cannot do. When you see him make plays like that, along with the assist game, you just really understand he's about as complete a guard that there is. Winding down for Hawaii. De Silva held on to it too long. Everything going the Gauchos' way. That is the sixth turnover on the Rainbow Warriors. Right here, this is a next-level move. A.J. Mitchell sells you, crosses you over, stops on a dime. Then he pulls back and fades away from 16. Boy, that's a defender's nightmare when you get a guy coming downhill at you. Not a whole lot you can do. 
Did you see that at all? I know you played with his dad back in the day, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. You talked about the Belgian flavor out there. I played professional basketball with his father, Barry Mitchell, who was a legend in Europe and throughout Belgium when I got there. A sensational player, obviously passed that on to his son. But I don't think Barry, AJ's got six assists tonight. I don't think Barry had six <laughs> assists in his whole career. He was a gunner. He put up points in the Belgian league. Now Cole Anderson continues to gun it for UCSB, knocks down another three. A 21-point lead for the Gauchos. Kamaka Hepa doesn't have the answer. Andre Kelly the rebound. Kelly's got eight points, seven boards here in the opening half. It's a 9-0 run for the Gauchos. UCSB, 6 for 10 from three. 64% overall shooting from the floor as a team. Angle for Cole Anderson, but when it's going right, it's going right. And that's about contagious shot making. That's what happens on teams. Guys start making them, and it just spreads to everybody. And the next thing you know, you've got big time problems. They're going to get them for another moving screen. I believe it's on Cole Anderson. The entire UCSB bench was hoping for an offensive foul. <laughs> Second foul on Anderson, and that's one way with the short bench for UCSB. That's one way Hawaii could potentially get back into this game for the second half is if the Gauchos get into foul trouble. Yeah, you want to try to keep the pressure on, but they've dug a hole so far here in this first half that they've got to focus on defensive stops. They really do. They can't worry about drawing fouls. They've got to put a lid on the basket here in the second half and try to claw back in this one possession at a time. Another minute to go here in the opening half. Noel Coleman hits a much needed three for the Rainbow Warriors. He's got half of their points here in the first 20 minutes. Nice little pitch play right there with the setup screen by McClanahan. <laughs> 18 on the shot clock. Quick trigger for Cole Anderson rattles out. Final 10 seconds here in the half. It has been all, all UCSB so far. Here's the take by McClanahan. Too strong with the left hand. And UCSB goes into the locker room with a 20-point lead and a chance to take home at least a shift. Fire for the majority of the first half. We're talking about 11 assists to only three turnovers, but it was the shooting that really pushed this game out in the open. Alvin Wisher, you saw him knocking down a couple threes there. 15 points on six of eight shooting, including three three-pointers. Hawaii, four and eight on the year when trailing at the half, but a 20-point deficit for the Rainbow Warriors. As we get the second half underway, see A.J. Mitchell... Only six points, but didn't have to score because all of his other teammates were shooting lights out. He did have eight assists and zero turnovers in that first half for the Gauchos. And that's amazing when you talk about a player who has the ball in his hand the majority of time. You've got to score. You're also creating assists, and you're responsible for turnovers. Tamaka Hepa, good start for Hawaii coming out of the break. And the formula for the Fighting Rainbow Warriors will be one possession at a time. There's no big 10-point shot. You just got to get stops and try to get buckets. So UCSB eighth in the country field goal percentage this year. They're shooting about 20% higher than their average. And again, a share of the regular season conference title. A possibility if both they, the Gauchos, win and UC Irvine beats Cal State Bakersfield. And currently the Anteaters up by 11 at home against the Roadrunners. Nice take on the baseline by Samuta Ovea. So if UCSB were to win and Bakersfield were to upset Irvine then the Gauchos would have 
the championship all to themselves. Joe Bonner McClanahan picks up his third foul. That's a pretty big foul, 90 seconds into this half. He's a guy who they need out front at the point guard spot to set everyone up. And right now, when you're down big, you just got to leave him out there and hope he's got the discipline to not pick up the fourth foul. I see what Hawaii does here. They have not been in this type of hole very often this year as the Gauchos will retain possession. They've only had two games in which they lost by double digits, Hawaii. They went 13-5 and five at home this year. All five of those losses came down to the last possession. They lost those five games by a combined nine points total. So they played a lot of barn burners, including a one-point loss at home against the Gauchos a few weeks ago. But a huge deficit to overcome here with 18 minutes to go on the road. Just nothing going Hawaii's way. As McClanahan lost the handle going up. And that's a good idea to try to force something early in transition, get a pair of free throws. But at the other end, unbelievable. Just stop. Josh Pierre Louis. His first basket of the game in acrobatic fashion. And how about this, Corey? UCSB has missed consecutive shots just twice in this entire game. And here's Pierre Louis with the little whoop de whoop. A little twisting acrobatics right there, body control. Like he hasn't heard from him, but he comes on the scene with some flair. They say Josh's nickname is Skip. And that kind of reminds me of a little Skip to my Lou and one sauce from back in the day. Yeah, I was gonna say you're going back in the day. You might have lost a little, a few of our viewers just now. But they're, gonna okay. to go to you, they're gonna have to go to YouTube and That's figure right. that one if out. If you don't know who Ray for Alston <laughs> is, if you don't know who Skip to my Lou is, quick YouTube search will help you out on that one. And one of the originators of that dominant point guard, man, he was amazing. Two-point deficit with Jovan McClanahan. It just shows you where Hawaii's at in this game, Corey, that with those three fouls, and McClanahan stays on the floor. Yeah, right now it's all hands on deck, and you've got to chip away at this lead. You've got a ton of time, but it's going to start with your best players committing on the defensive end, and then you've got to find a way to get some momentum. Uh, the Hawaii players are the body language, you know, they're just not hype like they normally are. They got to get some stops and make some plays and try to draw closer. We saw the scout line from the front and 0 for 5 from the floor. AJ Mitchell trying to barrel his way into the lane, falling down, no whistle. There was only four free throws attempted total in that first half. So the refereeing crew of Kurt Walker, Ken Diddy, and Juan Corral. Kept their whistles quiet for the most part as Pierre Louis will go to the free throw line. Our next Southern Hoops, a history of SEC basketball. Part six of the seven part documentary will take a look at the 2000 through 2011 stretch for the SEC. You got Tubby Smith leading Kentucky, Billy Donovan back to back championships at Florida, Pat Summit, and Candace Parker, also back-to-back -back championships. It's been a fantastic series. Monday night at 9 Eastern on 8 Central on the SEC Network and ESPN. Have new episodes premiere every Monday through March 13th. Could get a Pac-12 documentary for your era, Corey? We definitely need that. Air <laughs> Brock and Corey Williams with you action at the thunderdome in santa barbara california it's been all gauchos in this one Yvonne mcclanahan trying to spark something for the rainbow warriors his first field goal of the game in six attempts doing a good job of taking what the defense gives you gauchos doing an outstanding job of running them off the three-point line not a lot of wide open looks for three Making them take advantage of two-point opportunities. Harder to catch up that way. Mitchell gets the screen from Caputo. One dribble, hard stop for Pierre Louis and missed the jumper. Trying to head inside to Moore Sec. Sec, the freshman, 
who started the game due to Bernardo De Silva coming off his injury and not being available to start. Uh, it's pulled quickly in that first half because Andre Kelly is having his way with it. Set comes back in here. Really four minutes into the second half and draws the foul against UCSB. UCSB it was on Capruto. Stoppage right here. I think is it because Zavea needs to tie his shoes. There we go. Shoes are tied. Lace is tight. Ball stripped away from Noel Coleman. AJ Mitchell got his paws on it. Up ahead in transition. Pierre Louis. Oh no, it came up lame. Grabbing his knee behind the play now. Coleman for three. That's short. Pierre Louis still down on the other end. He gets the bucket there and comes up limping. Good to see him up because it looked like he took a nasty spill, but obviously good enough to try to make it through these next couple of possessions. And that was huge because Hawaii trying to make a run. He's still trying to shake out that right knee, Corey. And again, UC Santa Barbara not deep on the bench because of the injury trouble they've had recently as more sec gets the bucket. Timeout on the floor. Just to show you the versatility that you've alluded to, Corey, in this broadcast, just the amount of different ways that A.J. Mitchell can beat you. Well, it's about maturity as well. Anybody that has the ball in their hands that much, and doesn't turn it over, but also recognizes when his teammates are in scoring position. It takes years for players to develop that kind of mentality and that kind of vision. And he seems to have it already as a sophomore. His father, as Gordon mentioned, a legendary pro in Belgium. AJ actually played in the Belgian BLB League as well for the FIBA U20 Euro Championships for Belgium. Andre Kelly backing his way in. Turnaround comes up short. You know, in games like this, you got to do it in phases. If you're Hawaii, you're trying to just get to single digits. That's your first goal. One possession at a time. Try to get this to single digits. Force the Gauchos into a timeout so you can try to change the momentum of this game. Largest lead of the game for CSUB, or excuse me, UCSB was 23 points. There's Mitchell driving to the side of the backboard, but got possession right back in a reset for the Gauchos. Norris slips inside. More sec with the denial. When you take it down the lane and you run into sec, you got issues. You look at the wingspan right there. He's got the ability to jump as well. Great defensive effort. Now they got nine seconds remaining in the shot clock. Now it's down to five. Mitchell, the blow by and the finish with the left hand. Boy, that's such a backbreaker. When you've got nine seconds to play defense and you give up a layup, that's just hard to come back from. Eight points, four boards, ten assists for Mitchell. Coleman has led the offense for Hawaii. He's got 13. McClanahan misses another one, just not his night. One for seven from the floor. Up ahead, Anderson in the corner. Triple for Cole Anderson. Well, college basketball is pretty simple. When you give up open shots in someone's home gym, you're not going to win a lot of games. Those are layups right now. Gaucho's taking full advantage of transition and wide open looks. Santa Barbara 6 for 12 from three. Anderson's got two of them. More sec and one. More sec. They need more of that. That's a great roll. Gaucho's late. Nobody rotates. And that is an and one for the big fella. Right. 
Poor Sec, what a story he has been. Hardly played this entire year. He started the last two games because Bernardo De Silva was injured. And what did he do in those two games? Nearly 14 points, 13 rebounds, and three and a half blocks a game. In his first two games as a starting player for Hawaii, just a freshman, and the ceiling is very, very high for this young man. A lot of times when coaches work with big men, the first thing they want is to teach them how to defend without fouling because the longer your bigs can stay out there without foul trouble, the better you're going to be. And then in their second and third year, they really want to start teaching them how to be productive offensively. Give them a jump hook, a fadeaway. Make sure they get their offensive confidence. And by the time they're juniors and seniors, they're the anchors of your team. The crossover by Pierre Louis. He goes down hard. Yet again, nice to see that Pierre Louis shook off whatever went wrong with his knee a few minutes ago. A foul called on Sec. And this is really what you want in basketball. Not the hard foul where you're sending the guy to the lane, but you want that defensive awareness where your bigs are coming over, making plays at the rim. And you want to send the message. There's no layups, no easy baskets. Foul on the floor. No free throws for Pierre Louis. Clock stopped at 13 minutes even here in this second half. Kelly goes right by the freshman on the baseline. Easy bucket for the grad transfer from Cal. And he's got a great line right now. You just saw 10 and 8. Everything in the paint dominating using his size. Harry Ruinata, the freshman from Brisbane, Australia, in the game for the first time for Hawaii. Nice move and a finish for Noel Coleman, who now has 15. <laughs> right now, the guys just can really pick and choose what they do in each possession. Waste some clock. Tell the shot clock. Anderson step back. Another triple for Cole Anderson. You can't let shooters get high because then they start making even the bad shots. And that wasn't the best look in the world. But when you're when you're knocking them down and it's your night, go ahead and throw them up. 14 points on four of five shooting from three. See, UCSB has not been a prolific three-point shooting team this year, but. Throw the stats out the window tonight, Corey. Sometimes you can't go over, so you just go around. Kelly, I got to put it in the left, keep it away from the big fella, and go high off the glass. And that's that vision and maturity we've been talking about all night. You see it on display, the assist, and now he's starting to heat up in the points count. Eight points, four rebounds, ten assists for A.J. Mitchell. That was a break for Hawaii. A much-needed three. Samuda Avea knocks it down. Good set play, and that's Hawaii style. They get you to rotate and knock down the threes. They're good at rolling their bigs. They got guys that, that can shoot it like Heppa, who's not out there right now, but spread the floor. Nice move. Miles Norris. Didn't look at the bucket till the last millisecond and found a hole. Well, the Gauchos are really keeping the pressure on. They're not taking any possessions off. Bucket after bucket. Good take by Justin Jackson. 65-47 lead for UCSB. He's got four players in double figures scoring after that bucket by Miles Norris. Norris, Kelly, Anderson, and Pierre Louis. Or, excuse me. Yeah. Wisher for another figures as Kukuno gets his first basket of the game. Great pass. Gaucho still shooting 60% from the floor because of plays like that. 32 points in the paint for UCSB. More set off the assists from Noel Coleman. And Sex starting to get things going on the offensive end. Seven points, five boards. Seth looking for a third straight game with a double-double after again barely playing the entire season up until this past week. 
Joel wants a screen, he got it. And now has the ISO against Seth, fading away on the baseline, comes up short. Mitchell tracks down Coleman. And gets the steal. The other way, Anderson, not there. Norris, the offensive rebound. That's been the story all night. Gauchos quicker to the basketball, those 50-50 balls. They've been able to run them down, and they'll get a second chance to score here. Norris. A foul called on Moore Seth. 38th year for Champ Week. We've got four women's title games coming up for you. Louisville, Virginia Tech, one Eastern. In the ACC and the SEC Championship, Tennessee and Carolina. The game at 3 Eastern tomorrow. The, the Big Ten Championship between Ohio State and Iowa. And then Washington State, the seventh seed in the Pac-12 tournament, taking on the five seed UCLA. So some... Higher seeds in the 12 making some noise, trying to get an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Miles Norris at the free throw line for UCSB. Norris, who started his career at Oregon, went to Sweet 16 with the Ducks before transferring out, spent a year at the City College of San Francisco, where he was the Juco Player of the Year. He has found a home here with UCSB. As he said, a 68-29 lead for the Gauchos. He made a game-saving bucket a couple of nights ago in that close win at UC Davis. That UC Davis game, boy, 89-86 win for Santa Barbara. Kept them in the title hunt in the conference. A three-game winning streak coming into tonight. And as long as they win here, they're guaranteed at least a share of the conference regular season title. And so, jockeying for position down low between Wisher and Ulyanov. Wisher called for the personal, his third. Yeah, Wisher's got a mismatch. He's down there fighting for his life and getting thrown to the floor. And on top of that, getting whistled for the foul. He can't understand it. Ron Gennott talking to the official. Not in his eighth year for Hawaii. He's a longtime assistant under Randy Bennett at St. Mary's. Pendulum has swung for you here in the second half in terms of fouls and whistles. We hardly had any in the first half, and now they're coming in bunches here. Bodies flying everywhere. You see the missed free throw. Oh, trying to get in there and knock it free, but too much contact. This is Harry Ruliata, the freshman at the free throw line. Mitchell called for his third foul. So some foul trouble for... UCSB, three fouls on both Wishart and Mitchell. Still 9.05 to go. Mitchell rips that rebound down after the free throw miss. You know, he mentioned the very thin roster for the Gauchos, and guys getting a lot of minutes. Final nine minutes of this game, they got to continue to stay focused. Not sure any signs of fatigue. Norris misses that one, and a whistle on the rebound will go against Hawaii. The Adif called for the personal. Big West Conference Tournament coming up in Henderson, Nevada. Starting on March 10th. And you'll be there, Corey, in beautiful Henderson. Looking forward to a tournament. And you never really know what's going to happen. We looked at the log jam of teams towards the top half of this conference. We know what's at stake. A bid to March Madness. Always great games. Semifinals and finals in Henderson. Turnover. Another steal from Mitchell. Up ahead to Pierre-Louis. Behind the back to Norris with the finish. And that 
college basketball world. Well, the anticipation, the steal, the unselfish play, the assist, everything you wanted to see in great basketball took place just now. It all started with the steal by A.J. Mitchell. UCSB up by 20 under eight minutes to play. As a coach, you love to see plays like that because that lets you know guys are paying attention in film session and in the scouting report. Kamaka Hepo with the three for Hawaii. About the assist, Corey, from Josh Pierre-Louis. We told you about his route to Santa Barbara through Oregon and the City College of San Francisco. But a really great group of seniors on this squad, Corey. So great to see Ajari Sani. Uh, remember him from my days in Belgium as well. His father and I were teammates at the University of Arizona playing for coach Lute Olsen And then we were teammates again in Belgium when he was just a little guy Coming to practice sitting on the sidelines on the gym and him and his dad playing together in Belgium trying to shut down AJ's dad <laughs> Barry Mitchell who was in Belgium doing his doing his thing So a lot of connections out there with these young guys making me feel old right now E I think you might need to get like an honorary doctorate from Santa Barbara with all these connections you have to these, these guys. I'll have you walk at graduation this year if you want. That's very cool. The, the global game of basketball. You meet a lot of players. Good move by Cole Anderson with the jump shot rattled out. Under seven minutes to go. An update on UC Irvine and Cal State Bakersfield. Irvine with about 11 and a half minutes to go on top by 10. There is Ajari Sani. Unfortunately, having to watch this game from the sideline, they hope to have it back soon. UCSB up by 17. 22 field goal attempts, a combined 40, excuse me, 82 points between the two. They're going to go up against the newly minted favorites, the Phoenix Suns. How, what's the environment like there in Arizona these days with KD coming to town, Corey? A lot of excitement overnight. Suns fans loving the new team. One that get back to the finals. Been a couple of years. They got a great young team and obviously a great talented player. And Devin Booker, DeAndre Aiden. But the addition of Kevin Durant has really brought some life to the valley in Phoenix. Good matchup. And the countdown again, 12:30 Eastern. Kick things off. Six and a half minutes to go at the Thunderdome. 15-point lead for UC Santa Barbara, who shot 55% from the floor and 8 of 16 from 3 in this game. A.J. Mitchell, spin move, southpaw finish. Mitchell, 10 assists, 10 points, 6 rebounds. Well, it really makes it look easy. Takes his time in the one-on-one. -on -one. High percentage shot. What a job that Joe Pasternak has done at Santa Barbara. 24 wins if they hold on for the final six minutes here. would be the most in program history. It would be his fifth 20-win season in six years. And has just become a predominant favorite in the Big West year in and year out as the offensive foul goes against Jovan McClenahan. They're calling for that off arm, saying he hooked the defender. That's his fourth. It's been a really rough night for him. One of those players that they count on so much to get the offense ignited hasn't really had a chance to get going tonight. Eight points on one of seven shooting from McClanahan. Six of his eight points have come from the free throw line. Give-and-go action between Norris and Pierre-Louis and a foul on the freshman sec. And this is what you have to do with the big guys. You can't run from a shot blocker. You got to take it right in his chest. Try to put him on SC top 10 highlights. Be aggressive. Corey, don't look now, but Bakersfield is within eight points. On the road against Irvine, eight minutes and change to go in that one. So Santa Barbara fans watching that one closely because if Santa Barbara holds on to win and UC Irvine loses to Bakersfield, then it will be an outright conference championship for the Gauchos. Just as Jackson faded away, not there.
And one thing you'd like to see, Corey, heading into a conference tournament play, not only a big win potentially for Santa Barbara, but also the fact that it's end-to-end. -end. They have not let off the gas at any point during this game. We definitely want to go into the tournament trending upward. Like that Just baseline, like that. that baseline line. You want your guys playing well. You want them hungry and a little bit chippy because you got to play a couple of games in a couple of days. You ready? got to be ready to go. Pierre Louis touches the sky on the alley oop. An air ball three on the other end for Hawaii. Great turnout at the Thunderdome. You know, a lot of people say three games in three days. Is that too much? And I, I vaguely remember being that young, and the answer is no. It is absolutely <laughs> not. Those guys are so ready to play. As long as they're not injured, they'll be able to play three games at a high level. First turnover game. A.J. Mitchell, he lost that one going up in a timeout after Jovan McClanahan lay in for Hawaii. 4-0-2 to play here in regulation. Gauchos, their eighth best in the country in field goal percentage at 49%. 18 times this year they've shot it better than 50% from the floor. And that type of consistency, when you're looking at Okay, who am I going to pick as a double-digit seed upset maybe in the NCAA tournament? How about a team like UC Santa Barbara if they get there that shoots the ball at a 50% clip? Well, basically, they're shooting it so well because of the assist game. They're able to break down the defense and create shots for each other. A lot of these made buckets haven't been highly contested shots tonight, and that's a credit to their offense, the way they execute the way they pass the ball. But when you get into that tournament, you got to have more than one guy that can break down the defense, and that's where they're going to be challenged. We know A.J. Mitchell is sensational. Can he carry the load and stun a higher-seeded team in the NCAA tournament if they have the chance to get there? The defense, Richard Castile, up ahead to Pierre Louis, wrapped up and fouled. And doing it tonight against Hawaii, it's not like Hawaii is a bad defensive team. They came into tonight as the seventh best team in the country when it came to opponents' three-point shooting percentage, allowing opponents hold on McClanahan. Michael Barnes will send Pierre Louis to the free throw line. And it wasn't a hard foul. It wasn't an ill intent. It's just them going by the letter of the law. You have to make a play on the ball, and he really did, and he just kind of tried to wrap him up. Disappointing night for Jovan McClanahan. Four fouls now, ten points on two of nine shooting. Gets the flagrant one there, so a 77-57 lead for UCSB. Here, Louis fading away, tried to go bank, came up short. Credit to, again, how balanced this conference has been this year, Corey, as Coleman misses the three for Hawaii. But UCSB is going to go 24-7 and seven overall, 15-5 and five in conference. And they're going to have a tie for the regular season championship and will have only beaten three other teams in the standings by one game in the loss column. I mean, it has really been a great year up and down for Big West Conference basketball. And I think whoever wins the Big West Conference tournament and makes it to the NCAA tournament, I think you can really look at three or four teams from the Big West and say, yeah, these guys can legitimately win a game in the NCAA tournament. I always watch the champion of the Big West because they're always a dark horse. You look at the talent, the guard play. I mean, sometimes the teams are a little bit smaller than some of the Power 5 schools. But at the end of the day, you've only got to be great for 40 minutes, and you've seen a lot of good basketball this season in the Big West. So you're absolutely right. They get into that neutral site with a team that's not too familiar with them. They can definitely make some waves. Look at a team like Santa Barbara, or Irvine, or Kauai, or UC Riverside. All of those teams capable of knocking off a big name in a couple of weeks. <laughs> if you're reading this, start the bus. 
I would say that sign is pretty accurate. 22 point lead for San Francisco. You see the leading scorers for the Gauchos. Norris leading the way. Wishart, all 15 of his points came in the first half. And again, the fantastic all around performance by AJ and Mitchell. Timeout on the floor. 2.18 to go in regulation. Pierre Louis dapping up his teammates. Santa Barbara en route to a conference championship. No adjustment needed. Feeling is believing. So upgrade now and get 20% off your first order at TommyJohn.com with this code. Just over two minutes to go at the Thunderdome. Santa Barbara looking for a program record 24th win on the year. Look to get back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since the first game 2021. It's the only year that they have gone to the big dance under Joe Pasternak. The last time they won an NCAA conference, excuse me, an NCAA tournament game was back in 1990 when they beat Houston. You know, Joe Pasternak and his crew would love to get back. That last game came down to a final play. It would have been a huge upset in tournament. Driving baseline. 18 and 10 for Miles Norris in this one. A floater in the lane by Beyond Riley comes up short. You see Irvine checking their score. It's now down to a six point lead for the Anteaters. As the seniors bid adieu to the fans here at the Thunderdome. Classy move right there by the staff, let the seniors exit. Then the fans get an opportunity to show their appreciation, showing some love from the guys on the bench. That last go round means so much when you're talking about college basketball, what it means to seniors to enjoy themselves and have worked so hard. Great to see the crowd giving them some recognition. Final minute of action here. Matija Belich, the freshman from Serbia. And it's Caprudo out there as well. And this is also the worst part of the game, E, because you've got guys coming in the game ice cold, and the crowd <laughs> wants you to get a bucket. They want you to shoot it. <laughs> well, they, they've got that man on the floor. My favorite name maybe in all of college basketball. That's David Pickles. David Pickles, that's your best name? I love it. Come on, David Pickles? Who doesn't love that? Give me Boogie Ellis of USC. I love that name. Listen, as a man who loves a good hot pastrami on rye with a side of pickles at a George Deli, give me David Pickles all day. <laughs> David Pickles. Turnover on the Gat Chills. Excuse me, on Hawaii. And so you see Santa Barbara. A 20-point home victory in the regular season finale. 15 conference wins. 24 regular season wins. A program record. And at least a share of the Big West regular season title. Congratulations to the UC Santa Barbara Gauchos.